not let dashboards be about software. Do not let software people that are selling performance metric systems or performance management systems um, convince you that they can design your dashboard. I guarantee they can't. It's got to be a specialist with broad business experience who understands strategy, the five disciplines of the business, sales, marketing, finance, product development, and operations. They've got to have scope. So the best person to design the dashboard is the CEO. But of course, if they're only designing it for their own business, they're not getting practice. So I'll, I'll sell you more later that you want that outside perspective for a lot of reasons. Uh, and it doesn't cost that much to bring someone in for a day or two um, to really get this right. And it has huge leverage. Um, fancy color graphs are not a dashboard. People are using the term dashboard as an adjective to describe a pretty summary screen and that's not the kind of dashboard I'm talking about. I'm using the word dashboard as a noun to be a very specific thing that we've defined here that gets at the cause and effect in these underlying management best practices. The IT people and, and the people selling software will not understand this they're giving you a mechanical thing to gather the data and the magic and art of designing the dashboard is really where all the leverage and bang for your, uh, your investment is. Um, thirdly, uh, it's not detailed granular information. We're going to talk later about the four levels of reporting. Briefly, there are corporate dashboard, department dashboard, standard reports, and then personnel data. And I advocate everyone having that kind of model. As soon as you try to force one of these to do the other's job, the whole principles begin to fall apart. So we'll have more on that later. Um, I don't think it should generally be more than 14 columns in a dashboard. So that's the 12 months, you know, preferably rolling, but you can potentially set at, at a new year and have an average carried over from the last year. But remember, the purpose is to see a trend. So you want to see many months of numbers in front of you to look at that trend in the KPI. Uh, and the other two columns, of course, are the name of the KPI and either an average or for that year or a benchmark from the previous year that you might be competing against um, to improve. Um, so here's someone, uh, someone's dashboard that they would say is a dashboard. And I would say flat out, this is not a dashboard. This is a disaster looking for a place to happen. It totally disconnects cause and effect, the main purpose of a dashboard. It is, it, it's a report. It's not a dashboard. It's a detailed report. And it has value, but it has value at another level. And if you try to call that a dashboard, you're going to miss all the benefits that we're talking about um, that are in a true dashboard. And, and here's a second one. Really pretty. Lots of pretty colors. Wouldn't you like to look at that on the screen and feel good that you know what's happening in your business? I guarantee you won't. This, again, disconnects cause and effect, the primary purpose of a dashboard. And that's why a dashboard is always a time series of hard numbers to fit as many numbers on the page as possible. And it's always columns lined up by month. As soon as you get away from that format, you don't have a dashboard, you have a report. So again, don't let people who sell software or who are IT people or accounting people tell you what a dashboard should look like. They're in the business of selling software or they have a dollar focus as a financial person and that's not the right person to, uh, to be talking to about this stuff. So additional dashboard modules that you, you'll put in your curriculum. First, exactly when you need a dashboard. We're going to give you a chart of specifically when to use a dashboard in a given department, a given corporation, a given process. And, and these will all be in the handouts that come with our, our full course, of course. So you never have to worry about these dense slides. Uh, with the course comes a, a complete handout for that. We're going to tell you about the four types of, uh, of reporting. In the next module, we're going to tell you about the how of creating a dashboard. It's not as easy as it sounds. People are stuck in a paradigm of how they view their business and it's very hard to get out of that paradigm. That's why you typically need uh, an external consultant to come in that doesn't have those blinders on about how you've always measured and run the business. 
Uh, we're going to talk about the four types of numbers that must be in every dashboard so that the system is not gamed. And by the way, most companies only do two of those, and that encourages gaming of the system. So we'll talk about an example and a little story about that in one of the following modules as well. Uh, and number five, how and why most companies fail at implementation. Uh, you may remember in the 1990s and 2000 areas, there was something called re-engineering the corporation. Big hype, lots of people did it. 80 to 90 percent failed, and that's because they didn't understand these principles of change management as well as integrating new technologies and IT with business principles. So we're going to teach you how to work and do that implementation, although again I recommend getting some coaching and consulting because there's so much uh, opportunity for leverage here. Uh, and lastly, uh, how to hold meetings. If you're not, if you don't have the principles of best practices of management, the tool sitting on the shelf, even though you're generating it, is going to be useless unless you're doing the right things around it. So don't let anyone sell you a dashboard and leave if they're not doing some training, if they're not doing some coaching, if they don't have the high level business experience, they're not a dashboard expert, they're a software expert. And that's not where you'll get the bang for the buck. So the modules you should do next are the intermediate dashboards versions, the advanced dashboard versions, and we have lots of samples that we're going to review there. It's important to understand these underlying principles and philosophies first, and then you'll be able to see why those dashboards are what they are better. Uh, and then as an integral part, you can't do dashboards right without having best practices of management and leadership, the philosophies that we call PAMs, short for Performance, Accountability, and Merit System, which includes the five styles of management and when to use each that should be in every manager's toolbox, as well as the cadence of management meetings. And we have reference sheets that are included with all this uh, that come with the course, as well as exercises and templates to help you apply these principles to your own business and, and take away value. So thank you for joining us. Uh, there's contact information here for those of you who want to get a free consultation or a diagnosis of their business and what you need. We have the six systems. When you do all of them, you will have a company that is likely to dominate its market. But you've got to allow one to two months to implement each of them and do them one at a time. I would never recommend ever anyone to, to jump in and try to do these all at once. It's too draining on management and management time. So we'll see you in the next module of Airtight Management. Thank you for joining us.